Devin. Devin, Devin, Devin. You little bastard! Upgrading from emo veteran to the esteemed emo elder on our Patreon page. Thank you so much for continuing to support the show and for doing even more so than you did previously. Really, really appreciate you. And for anyone else supporting the show, you might want to check our Patreon page at the moment because things are about to pop off every week over the next month. Go to patreon.com slash reminiscent to check it out. Well, let's get to the chapped stick, chapped lips, and things like chemistry episode. What is going on, everybody? I'm Tom. And I'm Pat. We're best friends, and you're listening to the Reminiscent Podcast. In nowhere fast. All right, we are technically rolling. Taking you there with me. I'm good to go. Enough's enough. We're done. Done. (laughs) That's how we feel after... Before. Recording too much in the same day, <laughs> but here we are talking about a band from Ohio. You know what we were going to do? I'm so excited to talk about Augustana today. <laughs> and by that, I mean, I'm so excited to eventually at some point talk about August f***ing Stana, but we are not talking about them today <laughs> yet. I'd love to do that. Yes. But no, Chris Lukey, oh. that s o freaking. Heckin' B <laughs> went on a fantastic looking roller coaster tour of the Midwest and inspired us to do an episode on one of our favorite songs by the Canton Boys themselves, Reliant K. You know, I that son of a bitch has been driving me crazy because I have been talking. So, friend of the pod, Tom <laughs> met him at a conference. If you are just joining us this week, you don't know who Chris Lukey is. If one you, of the greatest guys in the world. He's a very positive individual. <laughs> If you follow us on Twitter, you've probably seen his uh, alter ego Twitter accounts and everything like that. So my son at this point has really been enjoying, he sits in this little bouncing chair and I run around the house, moving the chair around and I make roller coaster noises and he fucking screams. He loves it so much. That's very cute. I've never heard this yet. And it has made me really want to go on a roller coaster it's been almost a year and a half i was at harry potter world and i got to ride some of those i think there was only one like real roller coaster there it was like the hagrid's escape one and it was so sick and we rode like the hulk ride there i forgot how much i fucking love roller coasters and i haven't been on with the exception of those two rides i haven't been on like a a theme park trip and forever, there was a period of time when my stepbrother, uh, they're all like 15 years older than me. You know, we lived an hour and a half from uh, Cedar Point in Erie, Pennsylvania, and they were taking us. It was a little longer than that, but two, two and a half, maybe. So like our older brothers, yeah, the points, but the points made. Yeah, it was within driving distance. So my older brothers who like we really looked up to, it was like no parents for the day. And we got to go out there, cool older brothers and listen to music real loud in the car and just drive I-90 all the way to the theme park and then stand in line for four hours waiting to get on. Yeah, I would say this ride. song hits different for anyone who's <laughs> within reasonable driving distance of Sandusky, Ohio, because yeah, yeah, really any park, we had Waldemere and Erie and it was a solid park, honestly. For it's one of the highlights of, of here. <laughs> yeah. It, um, but yeah, Cincinnati area folks, I'm just going <laughs> to read off Chris's itinerary more or less. But. <laughs> Kings Island and that <laughs> part of the world of Cincinnati. Uh, Kennywood. Kennywood in Pittsburgh. Uh, he went to Hershey Park. He did a lot of the stuff that we would have held near and dear yeah. regionally. But he also went to Cedar Point, I think. And uh, it's a beautiful park, little peninsula that jets off into uh, beautiful Lake Erie. Um, but yeah, so when you hear this song by Reliant K, you're like, oh, that's, I mean, I, it's, there's no Batman rides at things that aren't Six Flags, but uh, I'm fairly certain. But um. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, it's a big can relate uh, (laughs) to Mr. Thiessen (laughs) in this particular song. We went, well, should we do this now or should we do it later, Tom? Our junior trip in high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to do it now. So there was like, I don't want to say a scandal, but I don't want to say it wasn't a scandal either and undersell it. But 
There's a thing called a sophomore lockdown for the sophomores where they would stay at the school overnight. And uh, <laughs> at that event, I cracked my face into a concrete barrier playing f- football in the snow. God. And I was concussed heavily for the next several days and missed oh. about a week of school. And that is just a glimpse of time in my brain. <laughs> I was severely concussed, <laughs> blood pouring out of my face. I forgot about that. So I did not have a great time at our first like, <laughs> hey, we're a class of 2009 <laughs> doing something together. Um, perhaps my own fault for not having spatial awareness Perhaps it's the way the weather's fault. Maybe the teacher overthrew me a bit. <laughs> Nonetheless, I, people might have just been nice to me, but they told me I caught the football. I I doubt that to be true, but I do remember. I, totally I, worth it. I it do remember a, a kid. <laughs> his name was Ian, and um, he was new, and people were a little. Uh, he might have been rough around the edges, but but he came up to me and he was like trying to do first aid because he was a kind of a boy scout type yeah, like kind of yeah. a nerd uh i don't want to say nerdy t- t- he ended up being just a nice guy in my, yeah, in my view but he was new still and pretty raw and somebody pushed him off me like what are you doing <laughs> you know like somebody who was really being less tactful about the situation but <laughs> oh was a God. buddy and really trying to be protective but there was so much blood everyone is i could see people reacting to the amount of blood coming out of my face this is not what i expected <laughs> yeah. to talk about when i launched into this anecdote <laughs> anecdotes buckle up <laughs> You're going to run into a concrete wall of nostalgic emotion. <laughs> um, anyway, so I didn't have a great time at the sophomore event. And after the aforementioned disaster of a senior trip <laughs> that ended senior trips forever at our high school, <laughs> I don't know enough about the details to launch into them as the story went. Well, perhaps. Oh, go ahead. We almost didn't have a sophomore lockdown because there was. Sex everywhere. <laughs> the, the, the class, class ahead of us, us was <laughs> there was they everything. were their main trick was to take a crate of water bottles, uh-huh. take all the middle ones out through a small hole somehow, yeah, fill those full of just vodka, put them back in, and try to make it seem like it hadn't been opened. But it was so obvious they got caught every time, and then it like ruined events for us basically, or almost did. Yeah, and they weren't the senior class that messed around. Oh, was it my sisters? It was two or three before then. Oh, like there was like okay. the year above my part sister. of like the the school's lore okay. that um, teachers may or may not have been partying with students. Whoa! But they had gone to like a beach or something. <laughs> oh like my it God. was the senior trip. It was like prestigious, whatever. But the year it went bad stopped it for everyone. Anyway, I didn't have a good time at our sophomore lockdown, which you're saying barely even happened. I did not know this. It almost didn't. I should know this because I was on the student government, but I am oblivious <laughs> to this. All I remember about the sophomore lockdown was Zach got a permission slip to come to it, even though he didn't go to our school. <laughs> because our Sam Cray almost got kicked out. The guy who overthrew me with the football <laughs> went up to Sam Cray during our sophomore lockdown. He was having a star-studded night, come to think of it. But he was like, hey, you got to go, man. He's yeah. like, what? I go here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Zach was with his girlfriend at the time, just somewhere in the corners of some part of the school doing God knows what. And Sam's just getting harassed by the staff. <laughs> it's tough. To, it's an ambitious thing for the chaperones who are there that night because oh. you have a school full of miscreants. Horny. Including <laughs> us. We are not the well-behaved individual. Again, the am I the asshole thing. It's like, yes, we were. For sure. But the reason Zach was there is because our band played... A set. Yeah. A set. They let us play for like an hour and a half, and then we just had the PA and the drums and the guitar set up. So then Zach, Adam, and I were just kind of jamming all night. And then eventually, yeah, Mr. Schneider was like, Zach, you got to go home. But like, we figured he'd get away with it. So we didn't have a way for him to even get home. I think he might have like walked home and my, we got a hold of my sister and she picked him up halfway or something. <laughs> he might, he probably just walked to your, your house on the west side. Which at two in the morning is a few miles. But anyway, anyways, we're here to talk about the junior trip. Yeah, that's right. We're <laughs> no, unpacking we're some about serious K. shit. We're here to talk about Reliant K. Yeah, it's but... <laughs> hot. It's hot in this house and uh, we turn the lights off. So it's a very gloomy, interesting, uh, <laughs> introspective <laughs> session we've got going here today. Yeah. So I was determined, you know, I've mentioned a crush of mine on the show before that we watched The Mousetrap the play that the high school put on. It did a great job, I thought, as far as high school musical theater goes, or not musical, just theater. Um, It scared the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. we held hands during it out of fear, which was, uh, I was like, I wish I wasn't so actually afraid of this play (laughs) because (laughs) otherwise this would be a great moment. 
It was dense. It was. It was a, it was a murder mystery, right? It was a fa- it's a nice it's a nice it production. I like the mousetrap. Who well doesn't done. love the mousetrap? <laughs> um it's it worked on yeah, they had this really dissonant sounding version of the song playing and stuff. As the lights turned off, I was like, turn these fucking lights back <laughs> on, man. This this fucking building's haunted. We all know it. Um anyway. So that girl, I think like so the onus or like the inspo for this whole trip. And I asked you before we started recording if if it was like, just would be the worst thing to say what I'm about to say, which is essentially that like, we brought a trip to the junior class back just to like, hold hands with the girl on a roller coaster, essentially. (laughs) (laughs) And we went through all the, cross the the T's, dot of the I's. I'll skip ahead to the end of the story where we got back to the school and the guy that had led me with the football a year earlier was like, man, I can't believe you guys actually did it. I'm like... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of bureaucratic and, you know, <laughs> paperwork bullshit to like pitch the idea, get the funding, get the, I had wow. to go door to door to all the teachers to get people to like, Mrs. Uh, some of the newer teachers who were young, I tried them first because yeah. they were like, I don't know, new. So I was like, hey, you want to, you know, whatever. And uh, we got the required amount of people to come. Where'd we go though? Was it technically a Six Flags? It was in, in instead of going west on 90, we went east into New York. So I don't know what that would have meant. Oh, not Darien Lake. That would have been old Ohio stuff. I I only have one memory of that entire trip, and I remember it was yeah. Where the where was that? I just remember standing, talk about your memory, and I'll try to look it up. I remember standing in line for one of the roller coasters with this guy Eddie and Seth, maybe. And I remember being like, I wouldn't normally hang out with Eddie, but this is like this isn't real life. This is like an extracurricular thing we can stand in this line for the roller coaster and wait. And behind us came the new... Six Flags Darien Lake, I think. Okay, okay. Behind us was the new uh, biology teacher who, dare I say, was was pretty cute. <laughs> and she was just like in shorts and a t-shirt. Might have even been a tank top. And I remember being like, are we adults where the teachers can just be humans around us? Like, it was a very weird, like, you know when you're in like... I don't know, elementary school, whatever, like fourth grade would be. I went to a K through eight, so I don't know which one's which. But like, I remember one time I saw like my third grade teacher in Giant Eagle, the grocery store, and it was like, they're allowed to leave the school. <laughs> like, it's just, it was it's so ju- yeah, weird, yeah, you know? No. <laughs> but it, for some reason, it felt very like we were equals at that moment. It's kind of like when you see someone drinking in an airport bar at 8 a.m. or something. Theme parks. A theme park day, and that's why I think we can relate so heavily to the theme of this song, Chapstick and Chaplifts and Things Like Chemistry by Ryan K, is when you're there, it's kind of a magical, you're like, oh, this day is full of possibilities, <laughs> man. Like, I'm a kid and this is this is the shit right here. This is, yeah. Cedar Point is huge. Yes. Six Flags Darien Lake is huge. <laughs> Even Waldemir, you could get lost a little bit in there. Yeah. Like, um, Especially Cedar Point, though, because you're miles from home. There's no way those chaperones are keeping up with everybody. Oh, yeah. And they're so not, have, they don't even give a shit. You have your little, oh, no. Yeah, they're logging their volunteer hours or whatever. <laughs> and you're just, you're getting lost. Um, yeah, but I can definitely relate. But um, yeah, it was, we went, we jumped through quite a few hoops to make that happen. And they were putting a lot of trust. I don't even, you know, they must have, I don't know. It just happened, right? And uh, I, I do remember <laughs> thinking that, like, you know, like you think of the show Doug or Scrubs where you have the inner monologue and you expect like, I don't know, your brain just kind of works in that way. I think you and I have talked about that before where, yeah. you know, I'm envisioning Patty Mayonnaise with this parade in my honor, like, oh, you did such a wonderful thing for us. Let's get married. And let's, you know, this is the thing that does it. Um, I think a similar big swing would have been when we tried to go visit that oh, <laughs> girl I met in, God. in Shippensburg, PA. And that was a swing and a miss. But um, you can listen to the Dear Maria episode <laughs> yeah. if you want to hear more about that. But uh, you know, in your mind, you're you're thinking like Doug Funny a little bit. You're just kind of like picturing this like dramatic like sweeper off. What feet. a lovely day! I can't believe you convinced the school district <laughs> to let hundreds of students <laughs> travel into the middle of the state of New York to uh, just you know to clasp a hand on a loop de loop. So and um, so what you're saying is because I'm not sure I'm even. I think you're dancing around it, trying to not. Talk yourself. I was expecting to like, you know, it's kind of like, okay, I like a girl and I want her to like me back. So you I should have just said, "Hi, <laughs> would you like to go for a walk?" I, I'm, I, you know, I think you're, you know, uh, uh, symmetrical or whatever. But <laughs> instead, there was this like nonsensical, 
entire trip that impacted hundreds of people's days <laughs> just to hold her hand yeah yeah and it it barely worked i think you know there's like a scream on the ride but then like you know the groups kind of part and you're a teen and you're like oh man people losing their cell phones beneath the batman ride and whatnot i'm glad it was actually a six flag so that we can tie this back into reliant k at yeah. some point anyway yeah. basically all of this is to say that like it only kind of half work half worked <laughs> but um you know you're so ambitious and like you're so convinced you can do anything you want when you're a young kid. You're just like, no, it'll work great. I'll, you know, we'll do it. And then you do all the legwork and you see these movies about, you know, high school student government. It feels like real life. It feels like really intense life or death shit. And, you know, uh, our, my buddy Donish was right there with me. Later, we tried to get a senior trip back and we actually went over the head of the supervisor for the student government to pitch it directly to the dean or the <laughs> assistant dean. And of course he told the other guy and they were like, <laughs> guys, what are you doing? You know, I was like, we wrote up this huge proposal. And we're like, look, it, I think our main thesis was it would be so epic. <laughs> you know, like, Can I have it? Yeah, I know. Can I have it? <laughs> Senior chip, please. Anyway, I am just trying to encapsulate theme park days to me are magical, man. And what's interesting about the timeline is like, so our junior trip would have been 2007. I got my first cell phone Christmas of so what sophomore year would have been. I bought it for myself for Christmas. Motorola Razor. Love that thing. So when we were at this theme park at Six Flags, it felt very awesome to have a cell phone. And daytime minutes were still a thing back in 2008. There was no like unlimited texting, I don't think. Yeah, this is a really good like moment in technology yeah. song as well. Yeah, like I remember try, try in, explaining this to your son. Well, you here's another thing. Class PM trips are someone. insane. <laughs> Class trips, there's so much problems because you're not in school. It's like seeing your teacher at a grocery store. You're just like, oh, we're on a bus headed nowhere. <laughs> like there's no rules. Like we're in like basically international waters as far as I'm concerned. You know, like I remember pre-cell phone, we went to the Pittsburgh Science Museum as like a fifth grade class. And I think Zach got one of his first kisses with a girl named Teresa on one of the charter buses they had. And I remember I had tossed a walkie talkie to the girl I liked and was kind of like had been crushing on throughout my childhood. Cause I knew the walkie talkie would at least be in, like the buses would be close enough on the interstate oh where we could God. at least be chatting all the way down. That's awesome. So like it was the equivalent of texting two years before <laughs> of us would have had cell phones. Um, what was weird was there was another person on the trip that was thought like it was a group hang and um oh no <laughs> <laughs> what's that uh motion city soundtrack lyric was like did this party of two have you slightly confused or whatever you know what i mean so it's just like i was like hey quick jump to channel seven and then we jump okay oh, quick, quick jump to channel four so they think we're going to seven. Oh my yeah, god yeah just like really childish shit but this was like fifth grade right anyway but zach's like kissing a girl two rows behind i'm like walkie talking a girl i'm like <laughs> having a crush is insane you know like I'm young as hell. Anyway, so like there's this kind of like magical promise of like, uh, I don't know, like not a fish out of water story necessarily, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know, chapstick and chap lips is, um, I'm sure everybody's had that day. Like going up, yeah. you're like, oh, this is a field trip. Uh, even if you're just hanging with your friends, because I remember you, Cameron, and I just hitting, you know, when the promise of the morning was kind of just like people had divided into their groups. I think it was just you, me, Adam, Cameron, Seth, just hitting the really great rides over and yes. over it. And just kind of just like, <laughs> we were also young enough to just be like, speed, <laughs> you know, like, oh my God, you know, my back will not hurt tomorrow. I know. Let's go again, again and ride the front again. <laughs> oh, let's ride the back. So it's more whiplashy, <laughs> you know, just having a total blast. <laughs> anyway, point well made about the cell phone tech. Yeah. I kind of want to at least give you context about why we would be a little more hype maybe than others. I don't know. You tell us, tweet at us at underscore. Reminiscent FM. Uh, if you can or can't, did you go on a massive trip when you were in high school or not? But um, I don't know. When I hear this, I think about church trips to Cedar Point. I, I can name dozens, literally a couple dozen actual trips to some of the country's best parks um, that were within a stone's throw of uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, or at least a drive anyway. And um, a girl put her head on my shoulder on one of the church trips to oh. Cedar Point, which is like money can't, you know, it's just like yeah. better than. I don't know. It's like in that first season of The Office when Pam puts her head on Jim's shoulder. Yeah. When you're young watching that, you're just like, wow. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, that looks amazing. And it was amazing. There was something so simple and amazing. This show's literally called Reminiscent. I'm sorry <laughs> for cutting you off. But it's just kind of like, what a nice time that was. You know, all made possible by 
Brought to you by Theme Park. There was um maybe not quite a theme park, but one of the best friends of the girl you held hands with at the amusement park. I remember I had a I had a big crush on on this girl named Brittany who was friends with you know the other girl and we both did ski club together and I I forgot to mention this last month but we shared Apple earbuds listening to Mayday Parade together and she put her head on my shoulder and I was like that's this is basically a proposal right here. Like, <laughs> right. We are, we will be wed. As Rivers Cuomo might say, we are as good as married in my mind, even though <laughs> married in my mind's no good. Um, yeah. That's what it felt like. It's, Although, to be honest, yeah. you were a band, but you were a band, uh, marching band kid. So there's some bus magic stuff Ooh. that we're not really touching on today. Oh, and we don't man. really have time for. We'll get into the fast facts, but like and traveling say- <laughs> somewhere where the chaperones need to be watching. It's like a magical time for a teen because you're like, I may not have my driver's license, <laughs> but I'm not in the town I'm trying to escape at this moment. So really, again, we're in international waters. We're going to be moving at insane speed in the middle of a hot summer. You know, it's just like, shit's going to be pretty fun today. And when you say bus magic, for me, that was a girl I think is cute is sitting four rows ahead of me. <laughs> right. And that's as as risky as it got <laughs> for you me. You know, I even recall early like like become, like earliest memory stuff, third grade, fourth grade, going to Titusville, Pennsylvania, where Drake's Well is, where they struck oil for one of the first times in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. <laughs> wow. And you get to ride the train or whatever, near Oil City or whatever. Oh. Um, but I just remember like on the bus ride, being like, oh, we're not in school. That's, I know that, I know that much. And then you're just like kind of walking. <laughs> and like the one, there was this one girl in class who had a disposable camera and you're like taking pictures like, this is different, man. This is fucking fun. This is like very interesting. And the yeah. adults don't seem to give a fuck I know. About, you know, about much. And we're like, I guess this is educational. That's great. But also, you know, I don't know. It's very exciting. Kind of those first few trips outside of your own town is really, I, I'm sure what it boils down yeah. to. Well, if we want to talk about the music video, which I think we should. Yeah, we'll, like, we'll bring up memories as we work through it. It seems like maybe Matt Thiessen wasn't having yes. as great of a time. Let's talk about the theories in a minute. Let me blow through some quick fast facts. Because awesome. this is, Let's again, the, re- the reason I think we're going anecdote heavy, we've talked about Reliant K before. We've covered, mm-hmm. We've covered- yes. um, Who I Am Hates Who I've Been. Yes, which is a very fun time travel video. That video is amazing. I love it's it. It's so good. Um, but yeah, they're an American rock band from Canton, formed in 1998. Matt Thiessen, Matt Hoops, Brian Pittman, during their third year in high school and during their time at Malone University. The band is named after the guitarists, Hoops Automobile, a Plymouth Reliant K car with the spelling intentionally altered to avoid trademark infringement. Two laughs. It's the third full length album, which is kind of crazy. It was nominated wow. for a Grammy for best rock gospel album, which is really insane. What? Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's uh, that's like yeah, that's weird. They didn't win, but still, that's insane. This album was initially released with four different covers, each one depicting a separate car wreck. In November 03, a fifth cover was released, which showed all of four cars in a junkyard, which is one, uh, you know, that you see now most commonly, I think, on the Wikipedia page, things like that. It's a little cartoon, um, but there are some of the original with the cars still in rotation. Certified gold in 05, the album was, a gold edition of the album was released in 06, and sounds, I think they did that with the anatomy of tongue-in-cheek, um, and those mixes sound a lot like, mm-hmm, I think like, the momentum of this band justified like kind of remixing and redoing some of that earlier cool, work, yeah. it seems like. But not a ton of fast facts on this one, just kind of catching up where we're at in Reliant K's career, which is the fact that they're not like 16 young, but they're <laughs> early 20s young, yeah. like 22, yeah. right? I think we concluded. Yeah, 23 or so around there. But, which is still young enough to like feel like you're killing it at a theme park and you're far away from, far enough away from real life to like feel like you're in your own universe. I will say um, in college, we did this like energy saving challenge and our dorm used the least amount of energy over the course of a semester and we won a trip to Cedar Point. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was and then super you took fun. A, a diesel bus there. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. But I do remember it being a little less fun. So I think they're. Oh, I'm sure. It could, yeah. Compared to like a weekend at college, like you have a finite amount of those. Yeah. Right. So I think yeah. we all felt like, um, oh, this is cool. But. We're all from Ohio. So we've all been to Sandusky, Ohio. So like from others, they might be like, oh, you didn't enjoy a day in Sandusky? It's just like, (laughs) well, like I was lucky enough to have gone there like maybe as many as six to 10 times throughout my life. So it was kind of (laughs) like, right, right. uh, Anyway, anyway, anyway. 
We're talking old folks' homes. We're talking Reliant K looking real young. Oh, and we're yeah. trying, you spent, <laughs> I'm going to say a little more than a minute at least, trying to figure out what the hell Matt Thiessen is talking about. <laughs> this song. A lot of cell phone stuff, a lot of Batman ride stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you have never heard the song before, it will become clear soon why we talked about our love for amusement parks so yes. much. And yeah. again, if you have anyone to blame, it's Chris Loki. So moving on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just jealous of his trip is what this is. Yeah, for sure. God, that must have been so fun. Bastard. Alrighty, folks, before we get into the music video, please give me just a moment to shout out our Council of Elders. These are our top tier Patreon supporters. In this group, we have Andre Provost, Johnny Leftwich, Jason Carey, Anonymous, Chris Lukey, Nathan Eshelman, Drew Edwards, Carrie Sanchez, Melanie, and Devin Booz. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. It truly, truly means the world, and I hope you all are enjoying all the stuff we're rolling out in the Patreon at the moment. It's going to be really exciting over the next few weeks. If you'd like to check out everything that we're working on and get the episodes a day early, 15-minute weekly post shows, behind-the-scenes videos, photos, video AMAs, please head to patreon.com slash reminiscent. If you have the ability and the desire to support the show, if you do not, that is okay. We're just really glad that you're here listening. It truly means the world. But back to the episode. All right. So the music video, we open up on an old folks home. Hayworth Terrace Assisted Living. They're playing. It's like a... It's not a band in a box. It's a band, that, right. you know, but the old people aren't into it. They're just playing. We're not really sure what's going on. I will say this about Matt Thiessen. He's not afraid to have his face really f***ing close to the camera in a music video. We saw oh, yeah. some of this comfortability. There, I don't know if it's an it factor or whatever you want to call it, but um, they f- seem to know who they are and what they're doing. <laughs> uh, and we saw that in the uh, Who I Am, Hates Who I've Been video where they're maybe moving around a little more, but Thiessen and the drummer kind of seal the show in this particular video. Yeah. I don't even remember the other guys. Yeah, they are, uh, the two of them are really put on a show, but they work at this old folks home, right? Matt is like an attendant. Yeah, so like when they're not doing the band shots, they're trying to get balloons going, they're feeding them cake, there's like little parties, they're doing anything just to like, I don't know, you picture. Make these people have to be alive. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's like they're- But they're not having it. Like they're unusually- um, Sedated. Yeah. We'll we'll say. And let's zip through what the, because I want to get to the theory of the lyric stuff, because there's a lot out there on the internet. It was actually pretty surprising. Essentially, Matt Thiessen's on his cell phone at one point, and he almost misses the fact that one of them (laughs) flatlines, gets rid of the cell phone, (laughs) revives him. Then the old people go nuts <laughs> to the point where they're kind of ripping the whole set apart. <laughs> and the band eventually um, is crowd surfing and it's fun and zany and crazy for a minute. But then they leave the f-ing place. Yeah. They evacuate. Drums it's a are simple being premise thrown. and like yeah. it's fun. And we told a bunch of anecdotes at the beginning and we zipped through the music video kind of for what's about to happen next. Thoughts on cell phones and relationships and things like chemistry and everything like that. There's a couple of theories out there. Indulge us, Tom, if you don't mind. Yeah. You know, it's, I think one of my favorite parts. Because I've never thought about this for more than a minute. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah theme parks are fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we put it on our driving out of town playlist. Yeah. You know, this is just like super fun. It's a slept on album opener, probably. Yeah. I mean, it's one of my favorite songs of theirs because it in, it inspires that nostalgia of school trips. Things I like about the video, specifically uh, when things start to descend into chaos, old people are just wrestling, which seems very My Friends Over You music video. Not far punk or anything, but... Yeah. But there's some whitey tidies. It's it's a little yeah. silly. <laughs> right? One of them leaves one of their dentures in the legs of one of the band members when it's starting <laughs> to get a little dark. <laughs> But you were you were thinking like, okay, is this a song about a relationship or is this a song about someone having trouble relating to like human beings in societal, like in public? Right, because like it's parts of the song are straightforward, other parts not so much. And there's so much talk about old cell phone technology and data plans that it's like, what are we focusing on here? Yeah, give me your theory first. You looked up on your phone, you're like, I think I got it. What was that first song? So it's actually super interesting because, again, every song written by every band was written for me. Yeah, for sure. Me too, actually. (laughs) It's interesting that we share that in common. Yeah, like just two guys from here just hanging out. All the music's been written about us. It's pretty wild. But the first theory that, that kind of made sense, which contradicts the other theory. So it's kind of like, I don't know, choose your own adventure, but... Which is listening to music in a nutshell anyway. Yeah, yeah. 
so he's kind of talking a little bit about how like almost like the phone is the enemy. It's like locked to my jawbone. So one of the theories that was my life growing up, I t- <laughs> you may have never heard me talk about my ex girlfriend Stephanie before, <laughs> but <laughs> but. I had a really hard time hanging out with friends because she would guilt me for not hanging out with her. And this may have even happened while I was at the theme park. I had a cell phone. She would text me constantly about, I'm so bored. I'm so lonely. Why did you go? You'd rather be with them, not with me. So the theory that I liked is that he's at, this amusement park, just trying to have fun with his bros and someone keeps trying to keep him tied to his cell phone. And he's really frustrated. And some, one of the theories is that like he lost his phone to the lake beneath the Batman ride. He was lying about it. So like he didn't actually, but that was the excuse. He's going to ignore the girl for the rest of the day. He's be like till eight o'clock when his nighttime minutes kick in. Right. And be like, I, I lost the phone. It fell out of my pocket, whatever. So he's trying to like forget this antagonizing, uh, you know, quasi love interest and just have fun with his friends. Which made sense to me considering the Stephanie angle and and I could see why how your brain was starting to piece those things together. As yeah. the wrinkles were forming in your brain, I could like, <laughs> oh, yeah, all right, I'm into it. But then you're like, no, wait, somebody's taking this really seriously in this Reddit thread I just yeah. came across. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, actually it was songmeanings.com and these are posts from back in 2003 actually. Wow, okay. Because someone really was like, well, I have thoughts. And then they took to the keyboard and were grateful for what Tom was about to read, I think. Okay, this is actually from January 24th, 2007 from Marcy. I think this song is about peer pressure. I may be way over analyzing it, but to me, it sounds like they're on some sort of trip for school, like with band. <laughs> I don't know why that was necessary to speculate on what group it was. But they're at a theme park and the friends are getting into mischief, doing things they shouldn't. He can't call anyone to pick him up because he's out of daytime minutes and he lost his cell phone on the ride anyway. So he just has to wait to go home with everyone else. And then it gets interesting. If you want to really overanalyze, chapstick is a metaphor for material things like clothing. Chapped lips is for looks and physical appearances. And things like chemistry are complicated things that he can't possibly understand. So, yes, that's what people are criticizing about him. I kind of like that, like a metaphor for like material things, physical, like vanity and other things you can't understand. Obviously, the band being like having Christian influence, people are trying to find elements of like, oh, it's the vanity that keeps you from your relationship from God. So with the cell phone, he's trying to like escape from like being a Christian for a minute, but he feels pulled in when he realizes that the people around him are doing things that they shouldn't be doing. If we want to tie it back into my life, we talk about our senior, uh, we didn't have a senior trip. We had like a senior camp retreat, right? Yeah, that was annual. They didn't take that from us, which is surprising because that was equally chaotic, but no. Yeah. So that, that I actually, I think I, you left, man. I did. No, you didn't know. I didn't. I had a really, really hard time. I was ready to be done with school. And I actually called Hannah, who I was dating, to pick me up. And I forget why, but I cried the whole way home. <laughs> I, was having, I, was, I was having a rough time. It's interesting when I watched you skip the 10-year reunion. Like, you're like, I'm, not, I- I'm good. <laughs> like, <laughs> which, no one's right or wrong in those situations. Like, but So, like, either of these theories, though, are interesting. Where it's like, you know, I'm around these people and I'm not, like, digging the vibe. Can you come get me? But it's complicated by the fact that, like, he, he's out of daytime in it, so we can't. So he has to, like, suffer through this thing. Um, I've never thought this much about the lyrics for this song, and I can't stress enough. It was maybe seven minutes. <laughs> and that's more than I've ever thought about the lyrics of the song. But it's actually interesting because people are like, oh, this song is nonsense. But, like, there's just enough information to assign any meaning to it, which is what's beautiful about some art. Yeah, I always really liked the... um you know, they're looking for trouble, but with me, it won't be found line. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. So Matt Thiessen thinks it's cool to just be cool, you know, but also it's just kind of like, there was an innocence to all this trip planning and everything that we mentioned earlier in the show, yeah. where it's just kind of like, 
the re- the intent here is really just a chance to talk to somebody I'm pretty fond of, you know? Yeah. The, it's really not that, like, more complicated than just, like, really willing to do anything just to be like, hey, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's really the main goal driving force here. But he he seems to be in over his head or whatever, like, he's, which is not, he touches this on his in his music more than this one time, yeah. he's struggling with, like, being a young Christian man and uh, being like more or less just kind of well-behaved and just keeping to himself, but um, struggling with his relationship with both parties, both yeah. the spiritual side of things and then like just re- straight up relating to people in his life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely felt like at, at, you know, junior year. Yeah. You did not seem to be like when you left senior, I mean, you, I'm stealing your story. But yeah, you obviously were feeling kind of similarly, like, can I relate to you? No, I'm going to go home with him, <laughs> like from the senior <laughs> trip, you know what I mean? Well, I was going to tell about, you know, junior junior year, how awkward I felt, but I guess it, it was a pretty consistent, you know, narrative through, even to this day, I I feel, I've been told that it's it must be in my head, but I feel so incredibly uncomfortable having a conversation with anyone. I just feel like I'm bombing. Like, uh, you know, the Mike Birbiglia thing. I'm just up there Kenny G-ing it. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and like, that's what I feel like when I open my mouth and I have a super hard time and there's like... But on the outside, like, you obviously have clients for your business. You talk to people. You're good at it. You're funny. You're interesting. You, you're, you're, you know, you're a unique boy. So it's not like you're bad at it, but... That doesn't mean internally, like, obviously. Well, yeah. hey. so I've always like struggled. I feel like, um, I don't know. Anytime I open my mouth, it's just like people don't want to hear this. Like they they can't wait for me to stop talking so they can start talking again. Well, I think that's true for everyone because everyone's bad. <laughs> really, Doctor Cox and Scrubs might say, um, "crap covered crap with a crap filling sound or something like that." <laughs> um, man, I probably butchered that line. It's been a minute since I... I haven't watched Scripps in the ninth time, so <laughs> all the way through, so I can't pull that quote out of my ass. But, um, oh, uh, bastard coated bastards with bastard filling, I believe is the line. But uh, Before we get too far off from the songs, I know we're 30-some minutes in and we've only talked about the song for a minute. I, for, I mean, the song is absolutely incredible, but can we talk about the outro? <sighs> yeah, how do you want to take this? Because we're only... We, we got another 10 to 15... Do you want to wrap up our thoughts on the what he's trying to get to and then finish talking about the outro and how like they're maturing as a band and then they like as a <laughs> I'm oversimplifying but as a result of this song decided to basically <laughs> remix the entire catalog cuz their <laughs> career was being launched into this like oh these guys are fucking real as hell actually yeah. like oh that song ended oh that's cute it'll be on fuse and then they're like wait a minute you know like you can feel the momentum of their entire fucking career shifting the music video yes. goes in this little reversal yes. thing one of the old people does a tumble and it's just like matt Thiessen with a quick little reversal takes himself from canton and shoots himself into fucking space and then does one of the most amazingly banging outros anybody's ever heard and then there's a little like lead line over and then he does and then he hits you over the fucking head with the real meaning of this song, right? And it's yes. like so clear to us after we had It's just like, yeah. can I relate to you the way you relate to me? I don't know if I can, right? Um, yeah. I just want to be perceived the way I am. I don't want to be perceived the way I am. You know what I mean? Like, I'm awkward as fuck. I just want people to know who I am. <laughs> and like, I feel awkward around these people who are being too intense at this fucking amusement park. Yeah. I'm having to lie about my fucking cell phone usage and shit. <laughs> Obviously, I'm like going to fucking youth group on the weekends and everything like that. Like, I'm having a fucking time here. Eventually, I'll write mm-hmm and try to sort through the spirituality shit. But for the moment, I'm not having a great time socially. <laughs> and um, yeah, you can feel Reliant K's career in that shit. moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just kind of like, uh... It's like in a movie when someone's hand is just about to sink and they drown and then a yeah. hand plunges in the water and just pulls them up. It's just like Matt Thiessen takes his whole friend group and is like, boys, we're going to Hollywood. You know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> Canton. You know, like, this is it, baby. And then like the whole industry turns like, who's playing over there? You know, it's just like, holy shit. No, yeah. So to touch on your point, it's fucking amazing and changes oh. so much about everything. This sh- like the fabric of the scene, the show, khaki rock. As yeah, we know it. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Thoughts, man. It's it's amazing. It is so gnarly because the song would have been great if it just ended, like before the the whole pitch drop and then bring back up. 
But yeah, it just launches it into fucking the stratosphere oh, yeah. when it comes back in. And it's so like... Is it a maturity thing or is it just kind of like a songwriting maturity? Like the, the balls to be like, no, this song is not done. <laughs> We're just getting started. Right, like, I think there's a certain amount of bravery there. I also really like that line, I don't want to be perceived the way I am. I just want to be perceived the way I am. Because, <gasps> there you go, Melissa, I have hiccups. Um, <laughs> she's mentioned that I get hiccups at the end of every episode. Oh, yeah. Um, well, there's something so raw and honest. About, can I relate to you? And, uh, you know, we, you and I talk about these... Uh, you start the day off so thrilled about riding the Batman ride and the promise of the day. How many times out of 10 are you riding home on the bus going like, oh, next time it'll be even better because I've learned from this. You know what I mean? Like, okay, didn't go the way I planned it this time, but it'll yeah. be, I'm sure the next one we'll go get them. But uh, I, yeah, obviously like the, the tone can be very different on that return trip. Yeah, I don't know. God. What a song. This song is amazing. Yeah, I think this is one of the more scatterbrained episodes, but um, man, this is the, that we never, we rarely dive into the anecdotes that early. Yeah, but I am um, for that long. <laughs> I'm glad you looked in, and I think it sets up mm -hmm, quite beautifully. I think if we're just taking, if we're re like, sorry to Augustana, who we have not <laughs> talked about yet and should. And I was kind of joking when we started, but there are bands that we have, you know, we'll do an inventory and everything pretty soon here and try to yeah. refocus. But Chris literally has tripped. We're like, oh, and we should talk about that song because we both <laughs> love it a lot. But it really frames mm -hmm, pretty interestingly, right? Like he's struggling on both ends. It's like, I don't really belong in either spot because I'm struggling with my relationship with this community that I'm a part of very much. But also like, I can't really talk to anybody just going to school going to amusement park. So um, mm -hmm is kind of littered with this like inner struggle of like, yeah, I can't run from either very effectively, it seems. So I'm just going to play this guitar fast as shit with no pick. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is amazing. You know, and it, okay. So the thing that I really loved about Reliant K is first of all, when I was, when I was listening to them and this was a Sam Cray band, he introduced me for those keeping score at home to all time low made a parade mm. Reliant K the Rocket Summer. <laughs> just main Sherpa status, but... He's the middle manager for all the other Sherpas. He's just like <laughs> clocking them in and out, and he's doing it in a very respectful, responsible way, too. So he, he has always been a very level-headed, church-going man. And at the time, I, I was like going to the same youth group as him. And I really love the fact that not just like he sang about God in like a worship band. Cause they were never, <laughs> I remember we posted that article to Reddit. It was like an album that's as punk as it is preachy. And someone's like, they're not even fucking preachy. Dude. <laughs> but like, that's what I, I the actually point of that fucking article was to say that they're doing both effectively. Yeah. Like it's a thoughtful glimpse into the life of what it was like to be a millennial at the height of like youth group culture. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, so when I was going to youth group, the other kids there were like, many of them were extremely sheltered to where like, it was sinful to listen to secular music. So they had to listen to Hillsong United or something. They had to listen to literal worship music. So for me, it was kind of like, okay, this like blends music that I actually really love. And it's not just like, Jesus, I love you. Heal me. Come and Do you remember this me, classic? <laughs> LOL. But also, do you remember this classic banger? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. No. No. Oh, well. How about this one? Make me a channel of your peace. <laughs> Where there is darkness, let him bring the light. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's a Mark Hoppus melody if I've ever heard it. <laughs> No, um, I do remember being in church and being like, would this, could I do a punk cover of this? Like, I remember <laughs> with every hymn, I'd be like, yeah, they're on, on this one kind of, this one kind of slaps, <laughs> you know, just like, kind of like, like, yeah, they were on one here. I like this. Be, I'm going to get off topic for a second, but, um, it'll be the first time this episode that that's happened. <laughs> so my friend, Tony, who was the singer in Run Forever, the band that I did the quick little stint with, uh, we were at his apartment in Pittsburgh and they were making fun of worship songs by trying to write catchier pop worship songs. And Tyler James, who was the singer of Still Frame Sky, was playing piano like this really fast, like, um, uh, 
arpeggio. Oh, what's no? no I'm one's, just kidding. I'm just like kidding. old, um, like vaudevillian kind of music. And Tony Heibel was like freestyling about how Jesus is the 51st star on the flag or something. And it was like, like super, like over the top patriotic and Christian. And it was so funny. He's the 51st star on the goddamn flag. Yeah. <laughs> just like. Cause he was, he's kind of a reformed fella. Yeah. I mean, a lot of his music was about questioning his faith. There was kind of a Christian tilt to the hardcore scene in area, at least while oh, we were around. It's a Christian tilt to all the hardcore scenes. But um, anyway, the thing that I oh. really, really liked about another Reliant K. Another conversation for another day, it yes, sounds like. Yes, The thing I, I really enjoyed about Reliant K wasn't like, Jesus, I love you. It was like very real world stuff of like, hey, I'm a, I'm a person with urges and I'm just trying to live my fucking life, but not let it totally take over me. Which is what the old people do in the video. That might be a good yes. bow on it. Because they show him being overwhelmed by even, yeah, I'll let you take The insanity it. of everything that devolves after a guy realizes he's happy to be alive. But like, it seemed Whoa, much nice. more real to me because I feel like all the other worship songs were like, almost like overcompensating. We're like, I choose you over everything. And like, but Reliant K was just like, Man, some days I don't even want to be doing this, but I know it's what's best for me. And it felt so real. Like you could actually relate to it. And some of the songs were just about, you know, can't make a call till 8 p.m. Because that's the way data plans worked at the time. But it felt so real to me. And I felt like understood. Because when you listen to worship music, it just feels like to be understood <laughs> as to understand. Is that a real song? Into darkness, there will be light. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I really appreciate They're all flooding it. back. You've opened up a door of my brain that has not been open for a while. I really appreciated the fact that they were real about it and that they weren't afraid to like question their faith. And I'm an atheist at this point, but it, I still really respect them for like, because there were some Christians that were like, man, if you even question it, <laughs> you're going to hell, buddy. So like, I felt like it takes... We're growing up and seeing like, oh, you all have very different opinions about what the f*** <laughs> this means. You know, <laughs> it's just like... Yeah, no, it was definitely interesting. The thing that tripped me up early, they were like, uh, and I spoke to God, spoke to God. No, but I'm just like, you guys are... Are you guys hearing... A, like, I had very like logistical questions as a young person. Yeah. Like, am I hearing... Are, are you hearing a voice? Because I'm not. Like, I think the connection's broken. Or like, just like, as I perceived it as a literal phone call type situation. I'm yeah. like... Mom, I'm not hearing it. I don't, you know, am I supposed to ask it out loud? Is God out of I know, daytime like, minutes? You got to tell me the rules and regulations of how this is done. But yeah, exactly. Because um, I got some real questions about like how this interaction is supposed to go down. Yeah, man. I, I had two weird like times in Christianity. The second time being a little more. Yeah, man. The song is called Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. And it's a yes. fucking bop. Where there is darkness, yeah. let him bring the light. Say it differently, you're a church. <laughs> I'm just saying, of all the ones, that one jumped in my head when I said, like, when I was in, I was like, this could be it. Punk goes gospel or whatever. Be like, they, they, they would slam this one. There was one called City of God that they mm. would close down church with sometimes. And I remember be, thinking, sometimes like, on the Sunday Big Mass, they'd bring in the full band and it, it was a fucking what? Yeah, would, same, yeah, St. Mark's, I think. Yeah. Oh, there was this one pianist. His name was Kevin. He actually probably worked with your mom at the Playhouse for like, he, well, I think he what played. What was his last name? Was it? It might have. He was like a bearded, chubbier guy, but he could, he could slam the piano, man. <laughs> Is he, oh, is there something bad? Yeah. How do you want to handle that? <laughs> well, we're getting a little off track. We, we, there's more to expand upon in the post show. I think the, the theme here is what started as an interesting, fun chat about amusement parks was like a new door of perspective onto the Reliant K career and, and Thiessen's lyrical journey, perhaps. And, yeah. Uh, I'm glad you Googled that part of it. I was ready to just do a basic fast facts, scene by scene video episode, but you were like, I want to know what the f this song is about. <laughs> and I'm glad we took a stab. Yeah. Um, and I think that's pretty much all we had to yeah, add to the that's, topic. That's not all she wrote. Songs of the week? Yeah, let's do Keep it. Keep it trim. Um, give me Lilith by Halsey. She she had a new album come out recently. Yeah. I don't love it as I don't love it as much as I did the last one, but 
it's still kind of growing on me, but the song Lilith, Lilith was like on my first playthrough, the one that definitely stuck out. I'm going to stick with Churches and go California off an album. I, uh, California girl. I like Churches. Nice. Or Chiverches as you Chiverches. Would say. I need to listen. I've never actually listened. So. Why do we share, man? All righty. An all timer. Well, uh, let's take it to Patreon. Let's take it. Um, thanks for being here. Hit us yeah. up on Twitter. Scatterbrained episode, but um, I had so much fun. <laughs> again, this is the first time we've been in the same room with the lights off for an episode. I think yeah. we're just getting hot in the house because yeah. you don't want the AC running in your eardrums all all episodes. So the so lights are off. I kind of love it. It's, I, it was I'm, an I'm interesting few more. <laughs> well, I, it, now that you think, now that I think about it, it's like a real confessional vibe to the whole episode. So. Let's just shut the door on it and move on down. That's a Hail Mary and a and a Our Father for Forgive everybody. Me. All uh, right, just love kidding. you all. Bye. <laughs> all right, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this pretty heavily anecdote-driven episode. There were a lot of memories that I completely forgot about. So the best part of doing this show, other than you hitting us up on Twitter at underscore reminiscent FM is remembering a lot of the better moments of my childhood, and I'm sure Pat could say the same. Uh, It's hard to appreciate it when you're in it, but looking back, maybe it all wasn't so bad. Like I said, hit us up on Twitter at underscore Reminiscent FM. Talk to us about Reliant K. Talk to us about roller coasters. Either way, we would love to chat with you. Thank you all so much. We'll talk to you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.